Thank you, councillors, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, the clergy, warm welcome to you for the September meeting of Tamora Shire Council and declare the meeting open. And with those words, I hand uh, things over to the general manager who's the returning officer for to conduct the elections of mayor and deputy mayor of Tamora Shire. So thank you, Mr. General Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, councillors, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in accordance with section 394 of uh, Schedule 7 of the, uh, of the Local Government Act and Schedule 7 of the Regulations 2005, uh, I am to take the role of returning officer for the election of Mayor for the Tamora Shire Council. Uh, and as returning officer, uh, I would invite nominations for the position of Mayor uh, of Tamora Shire for what is normally a two-year period, but in this instance, it'll be a one-year period due to the uh, elections being um, deferred uh, by one year. Uh, at the moment, I have one nomination for the uh, position of Mayor. Are there any further nominations? No further nominations. Um, the nomination I have in front of me for Mayor is for uh, Councillor uh, R.B. Furman. Uh, and as such, uh, being the only nom excuse me, nomination, uh, I, I declare um, uh, Councillor Thurman uh, elected for the next 12 months as Mayor of Tamora Shire. Uh, similarly, um, I uh, now call for nominations for the position of Deputy Mayor uh, for the position uh, for Tamora Shire Council. Uh, again, for a one-year period. Um, I have one nomination. Are there any further nominations for the position of Deputy Mayor? Um, the nomination I have in front of me is from uh, 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 GP Sinclair, Councillor GP Sinclair. Uh, and as such, uh, being the only nomination, I declare Councillor Sinclair elected as Deputy Mayor for the next 12 months. So I call on the mayor to come back. But before he does, the um, independent would like a photo of the uh, mayor and deputy mayor, if that's okay, just before we start the meeting. I'd like to find the mayor with the camera. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. General Manager. First of all, to uh, councillors, I thank you very much for your uh, confidence in the re-election of the Mayor and the Deputy Mayor uh, for the ensuing 12 months. It means uh, a great deal to us and uh, I think like all of us assembled in this supper room, uh, we, we all have a good thing in common at the very least and that is a very deep and very warm uh, love and affection for the Tamora Shire community. And uh, I am most grateful uh, for uh, that confidence. We will continue to work uh, as hard as we possibly can uh, over the next ensuing 12 months. Uh, and that time, of course, we'll be electing a full uh, new team of nine councillors. And uh, that will be, of course, for a three-year term. So uh, again, I thank you. Uh, the, the, uh, the past 12 months, uh, I would say, uh, has been extremely busy and I thank every councillor for your commitment and dedication to your roles and to this shire. I also warmly thank our general manager, the directors, managers and all indoor and outdoor staff 
Jamal Rashad for your commitment uh, and your uh, your commitment and your, I suppose, willingness to serve this shy community to the best of your ability. Uh, it does mean a great deal. We do make a good team, uh, and I, I'm very, very proud uh, to lead it for the next uh, 12 months. So again, I do thank you very, very much indeed. Now. Uh, now, we do come to uh, a special part of the meeting, and that is to have our opening prayer. I'm, I'm delighted to have in the chamber, or the supper room, <laughs> I beg your pardon, uh, the Reverend Nathan Manwaring, who is the chairman of the Tomorrow Christian Leaders Group. Uh, Reverend, would you please lead us in our prayer? Thank you. My gracious God, loving Heavenly Father, Psalm 100 says, Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. The Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Lord, we thank you for your steadfast love for us and your faithfulness towards us. We thank you for the rain that we have been given this month. We ask for more rain where it's needed. Bless the land of our farmers that we may receive its produce to sustain our community and to give you thanks with grateful hearts. May we show towards one another the love and faithfulness that you have shown towards us. May those who live and work and study in tomorrow's Shire care for one another and for visitors and those further afield who are in need. We give you thanks for the assistance that we receive from outside tomorrow Shire. We pray for our representatives in state and federal parliament, Stephanie Cook, Michael McCormick. We pray also for our Premier, Gladys Berejiklian, and for our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison. Strengthen them for the demands of their roles. Give them wisdom and endurance for making difficult decision, decisions amidst working long hours. Finally, we thank you for the service of our councillors in this difficult year and we ask for your strength to sustain them for the year ahead. We thank you for the work that councillors and management have done to prepare for this meeting. Please give each person present clear speech, alert minds, patience to listen carefully, and wisdom to make decisions that are best for the people of Tamora Shire. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thanks very much, uh, Reverend. It's always a lovely way to, to, commence a, to commence a meeting. We're deeply, uh, deeply grateful to you. We're grateful to the members of your Christian Leaders Group uh, for over the past, uh, oh well, I suppose during these COVID times it's been uh, a little challenging, but uh, with uh, Auxiliary Lieutenant Smith that uh, recommenced our prayers last month. Uh, it certainly means a great deal to Council, so please pass on our warm thanks. Thank you. Uh, let's now go to uh, apologies. I don't think we have any. We have a full house. Uh, any declaration of any interest, please? Mr. Mayor, I declare 13.2, the draft communities program. Thank you. I also declare an interest in 13.2, uh, Chairman of LHAC. <coughs> Further interest at this time? If not, uh, thank you very much. You can raise it, of course, at a later date. Uh, we do have councillors a, a public presentation. Uh, we've received a submission from Mr. Gallagher Woods uh, that wishes to speak to council and to have uh, Ms. Woods heard. I require a motion to set aside. Standing orders, Councillor Slay, Deputy Mayor, move and second. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. For the contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you. Now, Ms Woods, welcome to the uh, Memorial Town Hall Supper Room. And uh, it's good to see you here. And uh, would you please address Council? Thank you. Uh, well, you might like to, to come up here if you'd like. Let's... Thank you. Thank 
Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Mayor Bourbon and councillors, for allowing me this opportunity to speak to you. It means a lot. I guess in many ways I'm returning to my place of seeding. I wanted to tell you about a business that I've actually started and it's seeded in Tamora and West Wyalong, my, my heartland. And it's actually promoting rural Australia and giving rural Australia the visual voice that I believe it so deserves. For so long, I think we've glossed over ourselves um, you know, as communities, but I think we need to sort of stand up for that because society is having a shift with what's happened with, um, with COVID. And I think people are looking now, instead of spending their $20,000 on an overseas trip, I think a lot of people will be coming across that great divide and wanting to explore places such as these who've had maybe um, ancestral roots and, it's, and finding out just how wonderful these places are. I know I brought my friend Nat from Albury with me and she, she's never been up this way before. She's a Geelong girl and she cannot get over the people and the wonderful place that it is. My little business is called Anna Branch Creative. And why Anna Branch? And Anna Branch is a stream that leaves a river and re-enters it further along its course. And I'm reflecting on both physical and metaphorical journeys to sense of place. And before I get on to this, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. I was born and bred in Tamora. Um, part of my family were um, very early settlers of the area. They settled Quandry South, Quandry South and they've been here for generations. And um, I went to school here, I went to high school here, I had my children here. I taught at the local high school, I taught English and history for many years here. And in my later years, I wanted to start my art practice because I started, I started drawing, I think, from the age of two. And um, I think brick walls in our house were continually covered with chalk and anything else. And it's just something that's always been in me and it's, it's something I've always kept on doing. But I was always, I was always fortunate that um, Tamora Tafe was fabulous years ago when they offered um, certificate two, three, and four in um, you know visual arts, and I was really fortunate enough to be able to go and complete um, up to certificate four, which was the highest um, the highest level that I could have gone to in Tamora. That was that was as an adult, and I was really fortunate in um, years uh, no, uh, 2013, 14. I was able to go to CSU and do my advanced diploma in fine art, which has really stood me in good stead for my art practice. It's been sort of that, that was very defining, and it's sort of a, allowed me to pursue it at, at, a, at, a, at a different level. Um, what I've actually done is I've come back and used my drawing skills to draw images of small, I've drawn, actually I have a folio of stuff that I've drawn, but under production I've had Tamora, West Wyalong and Albury, my three heartlands now, um, manufactured on linen tea towels. The tea towels have been printed in Melbourne by Rodriguez, which are a third generation owned Australian company. Um, Red Tractor have theirs, theirs done with the same company, so we're looking at a really good quality product. And I've drawn Tamora Main Street from an interesting angle on the tea towel um, with Tamora and the postcode on it. Would you like to see that? Mm. Um, this is Tamora. <coughs> it's drawn from a cherry picker. And the reason I chose, chose this angle was because I wanted people to actually have a look at our main street and see it from a whole different angle to what you actually see, you know, from a street viewpoint. And I've drawn a contemporary drawing, which is my illustrative style, and I've put sepia wash over it to suggest two things. It's a juxtaposition. It's the present contemporary as in now, and the sepia as in an old photograph. 
And what I wanted to do was to appeal to two different audiences, maybe more, but people of now, they can use these tea towels as gifts for people um, and, you know, to send overseas or to give to, you know, family members that don't live here but want something quite pertinent from, from Tamora. And I've also done it with the sepia wash because it suggests the past. And I was really fortunate not, not long ago, um, and I don't you know, normally go to Sydney to deliver things, but um, I was messaged by a couple who live in Manly. He actually grew up in, in West Wylong and she grew up in Tamora. And I was really excited to be able to deliver tea towels for them and their extended family. So I took a big bunch of bundle of tea towels down to, down to Sydney for them. That was exciting. And that's that's another audience. Um, this is the one of West Wylong that I do. I hope I've got one here. I generally carry them around like this. Yeah, this is West Wylong's viewpoint. Again, it's got, it's, and I'm trying to capture things that are iconic in West Wylong, obviously it's been in the road. And then with Albury, I kept, this, this is just as a snapshot, I captured the iconic railway station using the same style. So these tea towels, or these, these art forms done on a tea towel should become a recognisable genre wherever you wherever you can purchase them. I have a folio of a heap of other towns that I've drawn, but I've got to get those, um, you know, born, as so to speak, um, when I get some capital behind me with this. So that's, that's pretty exciting. All country towns have got their own structures that pertain to them. And it's really interesting, it's really amazing because since I've been doing this, I mean, architecture's been something that's been so fascinating, but I've really started to look at architecture. architecture. Um, and we really need to celebrate what we've got. So often we just go down the street, oh, you've got to go to the post office, I've got to do this, that and the other thing. And you don't actually look at the structures of what we have. Interestingly enough, I was at um, an art workshop in, I think it was in Chilton in Victoria. And a fellow in the art workshop found out that I was from Tory. He said, how come that post office has two different roof styles? And I said, I don't know. And he said, is it because there was a Chinese um, set of builders and then a German set of builders? And I can honestly say, I don't know. But it's something that I've thought about for a long time afterwards. How often do we just see, but we, but we don't see? At the moment, we have these beautiful buildings that are, to me, just amazing, amazing architecture. And we have them empty, like the, the hotels in Tamora now are empty. And, you know, it's time for us as, as intelligent people to actually start thinking how we can repurpose these buildings, how we can stay the very fabric of our main streets with these beautiful buildings. What can we do to make them relevant to now? They're relevant to now in a visual sense, but what can we do to actually make them a, re a, a purposeful, functional building? Look, I know when I was living in the, um, when I lived in the Oswald Flats, I mean, those, that building is a sensational piece of art deco architecture. And the people that own it have no, no, no interest in actually maintaining the building. And it's something that's probably not going to be there for a very long time without it being maintained. That to me is really, really sad. Anna Branch is an all Australian company, it's all, an all Australian business. As I said, Roderick A's is third generation um, Australian production. They source Polish linen and there's me. And I'm actually wanting to support local businesses or a local business with my, my product because I think local businesses need, need support. And Deb's, Deb's Diamonds and Dust, I think she calls herself now, she's going to take them and, and um, they can be purchased there. And Tamora's own have, all, have also purchased them. And you'll be able to buy those, those tea towels um, at that particular place. Um, at the moment, I'm planning only on making um, my work um, a limited edition. 
So I've had 300 of the tea towels printed. And once they're gone, I will come back if there is a need or a demand and draw another vista of the town. Somebody suggested to me that I do the flour mill this morning and I thought, yeah, that's, that's in the back of my mind. Um, so that it actually becomes a collection. So what I'm doing is not going to go on ad infinitum. Once they're sold, I'll come back and draw something else. If the community, and that's important, if the community perceives that there's a need, because I don't want to, you know, just voice my, my stuff on you. Um, at, the, at, at, the, at present, I've had people in Albury um, snabbling up the details. I've had real estate people buying it. Um, Albury Picture Frames have bought lots of them, and they've then commissioned me to do uh, one of Wodonga, which is really exciting. Um, and I'm told from, from um, BUR Real Estate and Albury, which are friends of mine, that bottles of wine look really great wrapped in them. <laughs> so I'll get to find that out. And all in all, in a serious note, these tea towels are an art form on a piece of linen, which makes them either a practical thing or something else. And I've had people in Albury frame the tea towel from Albury and Deb's framed one in her shop so you can see that, so it can be framed. Um, and the tea towels won't be sold in any other towns, so tomorrow will only will have the rights to their tea towel. The same as West Wylong, the same as Albury, because I think each town, each town needs to have that ex exclusive voice. And for me, I'm really passionate because rural Australia is, is just so vital. I mean, I've done a lot of travel overseas and I still come home and I still just think it's just a magical place to be. And all in all, my tea towels and my artwork is meant to be a true celebration of place and a reflection of, of pride in our morality. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's uh, terrific to see uh, your passion, and it's great to see you back home, uh, where you uh, where you belong. Uh, it's uh, yeah, a terrific initiative, and well done. And thank you for, for speaking to council. Very ah, the council. Is there any questions? I know we um, a bit generous with uh, yeah. Woods. Are any questions or comments? Oh, sorry. I'm... <laughs> That's fine. Sorry. That's fine. That's fine. Any comments or questions? No, I think uh, they're all impressed. You've impressed council. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, councillors, um, motion to resume standing orders, please. Thank you, Councillor Ryan or Councillor Oliver. Move the second. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. Uh, you no. Know, clear the motion. Carry. Thank you. Uh, confirmation of minutes of the August meeting of Morrishire Council, please. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Seconded the Deputy Mayor, moved and seconded. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Thank you, no. Clear the motion and carry. Thank you. Any matters arising, Mr. General Manager? No. No, thank you. Uh, councillors, you'll see a mayoral minute that's been handed to you. Or should have been. You think it's over? Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, number one, Council will reflect warmly on the recent Freedom of the Shire Award presented to the first President of Tamora Shire, Mr Peter James. The third generation Mayor of Tamora, Mr James, his wife Mrs Lynette James and their children, Mr Clayton James and Mrs Edwina Chapman, have contacted me and specifically asked uh, that I send their sincere thanks to Tamora Shire councillors and staff for the honour conferred on Mr James. Regardless of the COVID-19 restrictions, this was a special occasion, particularly having our former mayors and presidents with us uh, and our federal and state members of parliament. Once again, I thank all involved with this rare and significant event. Uh, in the theme of recognising those leaders who have gone before us, I advise council that there has been a practice in years gone by where former mayors and shire presidents had street names or road names in their honour. Councils before us have done this well. However, after some detective work by our engineering senior technical officer, Mr Dallenberg, we have found that there are some missing. And this I would like us to rectify. 
The following outlines those past mayors and presidents who have not been included in the street and road name list. And you see there councillors, uh, some names missed in the municipal, uh, but noting that Mr Treflay uh, has that uh, impressive shed named in his honour. The Narraborough Shire, there's presidents there, which I have to say, Councillor, I've been shocked to see uh, Mr Cartwright, the late WJ, who was just an icon, obviously, uh, of, um, <laughs> of certainly local government in those formative years that uh, uh, hasn't been honoured in that way. And also, you see there uh, the late uh, IJ Murphy um, and, and other distinguished men there as well. And you see there again, tomorrow Shire, Mr Murphy. So those that are not listed here, their family names have already had road names. And I thank our engineering technical officer, uh, Mr Dallenberg, for his research uh, in this front. Uh, it must be noted that the names can only be put forward after the honoree has passed away. So these uh, past mayors and presidents have, have uh, uh, have obviously passed on, uh, but again, their, their memory lives on with us. Uh, you will note over the page that uh, Mr. I.D. McRae, or Judge Ian McRae, who served as the Mayor from 73 to 78, and Councillor Judd from, as Mayor of Tamora Shire from 2000 to 2006, uh, are unable to be included in the list of bulk. However, the general manager has indicated that it will be a notation on the list uh, that they are to be added so it doesn't get slipped through the system. Uh, to one of the above former mayors and presidents, and for the sake of consistency, I firmly believe it appropriate to have the above named leaders referred to our street and road name list. And councillors, there is a, a, a strong recommendation there that the above listed mayors and shire presidents who make up Tamora Shire be added to the council street and road naming list and further that those individuals and families be advised of the honour the council has thus conferred. Uh, thirdly, council will have heard by now the Independent Pricing and Regulatory Tribunal, IPART, announcing the 2021-22 rate peg limit as 2%. After discussions with our Director of Administration Finance, Mr Smith, we both agree that realistically it is still low. However, given the COVID situation this country is facing, it is a figure better than we expected. And all of us, like our community, will just have to tighten our belts a little more while still providing the tremendous services and facilities we do. Uh, number four, Council will be pleased to learn of the Commonwealth Bureau of Meteorology finally realising their terminal area forecast, the TAF review consultation draft report. Over the past few years, the Deputy Mayor, General Manager and I have made strong and consistent representations on behalf of Council, uh, and they've been made to our Federal Member for Riverina, Mr McCormack, and the Federal Minister responsible for the aviation, uh, the Honourable Susan Lay. It is pleasing to see that the TAF has been included in the draft report as one of two new TAFs to be installed. We must remember, however, this is only a draft report. The Council is currently drafting a very solid submission to the review. And I encourage every individual who has an interest in aviation and seeing our Shire strengthened even further to please put in a submission to the review. The submissions must be received by the 6th of October of this year and may be made via email, uh, TAF review, one word, at BOM, Bureau of Meteorology, bom.gov.au. Uh, I advise <coughs> Council that as a Commissioner of the New South Wales Local Government Boundaries Commission, the COVID safe public hearing dates have been determined for the demerger proposals of Kootamundra, Gundagai and Snowy Valley's councils. These will be held in the first two weeks of November. We must all think of our neighbouring councils and the conflicting views which exist. And this should also remind all councils who survived the 2015-16 merger process of how blessed we really are. Our council and the community will delight in the news of the Southern Lights project finally coming to fruition 
Tomorrow show originally announced we will be upgrading our 643 street lights to the brighter and more economically viable LED lighting. LED lights are far more efficient, require less maintenance and have a much longer life. I commend Council for allocating the funds in the budget to be part of this important project. The Southern Lights Project is a group of 47 councils covering from Bega to Brakeham Hill. Its project manager is the Rerock Chief Executive, Mrs Julie Briggs. I warmly commend the Rerock Board, but particularly Mrs Briggs, on her outstanding efforts to bring this mammoth cost-saving program to fruition. Uh, and councillors, on page five there is a uh, recommendation for you to consider that council adopts the recommendation as presented and notes the remainder of the report. Now, in, in discussion of the, uh, of the report that's before you, uh, I, councillors, after the function on Saturday <coughs> with uh, Mr James, it just uh, reminded me, and I think this council does it so, so well, of um, being committed to the future and the present, but also saluting those that have gone before us. And, um, and uh, it just dawned on me thinking about some of the others that were in the, the, in the, the lovely area out here in our uh, upgraded Memorial Hall that uh, there were some that I, I couldn't think of that we had honoured them, and that's um, why the engineering team uh, did the homework and we just we do really and truly need to have consistency uh, and that's why I feel very strongly uh, about this that we can't have some that have been honoured uh, and some that have not so that's why I, I do strongly recommend that with that notation that Councillor Judd and uh, Judge McRae uh, that there is that notation that uh, <coughs> one day way way down the track that uh, <laughs> way down the track, <laughs> that they will be uh, honoured by future councils of, of this shire. The Councillor Judd, do you have any comments in relation to that? Oh, I just, uh, I know we actually moved an ocean about it, but we talked recently about council, the late Councillor Hawkins, and I think just to make sure we don't miss him, I'd just like to see him added to that list probably. So. Uh, thanks Councillor Judd. Just uh, on that, he, he, to Mr Dallenberg's credit, he did uh, put that on his list to me uh, about Mr Hawkins and I chose not to include it here because he'd been captured on the list. However, uh, I'm happy for that to um, just to be captured uh, in that, uh, yes. Councillor Oliver. Yeah, thank you Mr Mayor. I'd also like to see uh, WJ Cartwright probably elevated up toward the top. He not only served on the Narrabarra Shire for all those times, but he also was very instrumental in getting the railway here to tomorrow. Now, without that railway, tomorrow wouldn't be what it is now. Also, we heavily involved in pharmaceuticals and also um, on the show committee, and I don't think it was called the show committee in those days. It was pastoral, so, agricultural, and uh, so he was some um, horticultural and yeah. industrial. And industrial. <laughs> P A H and I. Councillor Ryan, I do have a family connection with the PAHNI Society. <laughs> uh, thank you, Councillor Oliver. And I, I suppose that um, if Council adopts this, those uh, names, distinguished names, would be referred to that list. And, uh, and I would think that um, the Council of the day would place them in a, uh, in a very high priority. <laughs> But thanks for reminding us, uh, it's important that we remember what these significant individuals have done. Uh, so, councillors, there is uh, the mayoral minute there and a recommendation and the remainder of the report be noted. Councillor Winky, thank you. Councillor McLaren, moved and seconded. Uh, further discussion? If no further discussion, I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye, aye. Contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. So Councillor, let's go now to our business paper and on page 10 of 5.2 committees and delegates for the ensuing 12 months. Uh, Mr General Manager. Uh, yes, thank you Mr Mayor. Uh, as you can see uh, we have 
bit of a state of flux at the moment because the 355 committees uh, at this stage would have been embedded in, uh, but we've, we've come to the point, uh, we're sort of in a, a bit of a stay of, um, um, of proceedings at the moment. So um, we, we have to elect the council delegates knowing that probably the 355 committees will kick off from July next year um, rather than this year uh, that we were hoping. Um, a couple of things there, the Golden Fields Water County Council, as you can see there's a, an opinion from the Office of Local Government uh, indicating that um, uh, the person elected, in this case uh, uh, Councillor Sinclair, uh, retains that office for uh, until the next election. So uh, effectively that would have been a five year period uh, or five year term. Uh, and the rest is, um, yeah, it's just a matter of going through them. Mr. Thank you. Well, yes, we could do that if the council or, wanted, or there could be uh, another. No, council Smith. Oh, can I move a motion that uh, all the committees and delegates remain as is for the next twelve months? Thank you. May you may move that, and if uh, someone wishes to, you know, be added or withdrawn. So the motion is seconded by the deputy mayor. Uh, thank you. Moved and seconded. So discussion. Uh, all council is happy to continue. In your respective roles, Councillor Slade. Yes, I, if I might, I'd like to join the one that I've never been able to get to before. As it's an office, they kept on telling me at the door that I didn't belong. Uh, I, if if that would be possible, I, uh, I'm conscious that it's a committee that does a great deal of work, uh, but I'd like to see it in operation. Uh, Councillor Slade wishes to be added to the Assets Committee. Any further? Additions or removals? No? Uh, the general manager? I have one. It has me down as a delegate on the Assets and Operations Committee, and I'm actually not. Uh, I'm only delegate on Section 355. Uh, on... No, ignore that. Be... ignore that. I... You are. As far as the Minister for Labor Government is concerned, I need to be. You are. <laughs> deal, deal. Further discussion on the motion? <laughs> You're just looking to get out of work. Councillor Smith. Uh, yeah, on, in all these delegates, it hasn't got the fruit fly group there. They have gone into recess over this period, but they said they will restart later. Okay, and that is a section 355? Yeah. Okay, so Councillor Smith, you'd like that. Have you always used to be in the group? Yeah, they, they, they sent a letter saying yeah, no, they sent us uh, a letter saying they in recess. Yeah. Uh, so we we've taken it out, but we'll when they if they reinstitute it, uh, we'll bring it back. Yeah, Mavis Cassidy said they're just doing it while there's a few of them that aren't well, and but they're hoping to get a few new members and fire it up, which they have done a fantastic job. Yes, exactly. So you'll draw to council's attention uh, if and when they do reestablish. Oh, well done. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Councillor Smith. So there's nothing further in terms of discussion. Uh, I'll put the motion that all those committees remain the same with the inclusion of Councillor Slade to the Assets and Operations Committee. Uh, all those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. To the contrary, no. Be the motion is carried. Uh, Councillor, let's go to our, uh, our next item, that is committee reports. Page 23, the Assets and Operations Committee report, and the Deputy Mayor happens to be the Chairman. Move the report, report to receive. Thank you. Second for the motion, please Councillor Wink move and second with all those of that opinion, please say aye. Come as you know, clear the motion to carry. Thank you. Councillors, do you have anything out of the Assets and Operations Committee uh, report that you would like uh, further considered to see about? If not, is uh, someone prepared to move? Oh, sorry, just uh, councils on page, this is about notice on page 57, in relation to the issue of the Memorial Town Hall signage. Now, I think all of us have had um, different comments on and off about uh, the signage uh, being not, not, not as clear uh, and defined. Uh, and I understand that, that uh, staff are looking at, at genuine options uh, for that to be enhanced. Uh, yes. Thank you. Do we have any? Oh, the director's not here. Okay. 
We are. How yeah, that's going to occur? We'll but that's to just be a very good yeah, yeah, the director has it. In. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillors, Assets and Operations Committee report and its recommendations are there for your consideration. Councillor Smith, you're moving the recommendations be adopted. Yeah. Thank you. Seconder, Councillor Winky, move or second that all those who had opinion please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Clear the motion is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillors, over on page 63, we have the Economic Development and Visitations Committee meeting, and I'm the chairman of that committee. Uh, is someone prepared to move that that report is received? Please. Councillor Oliver, the Deputy Mayor, move and second that all those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Uh, Councillor, there is uh, that single report there in uh, open council plus some uh, business without notice. And uh, someone prepared to move the report and recommendations. Councillor Oliver. Councillor Wink, uh, Council Winky moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? If not, I will put the motion to you. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you. Councillors, over on page 71, uh, this has been written as minutes, but I understand from the general manager that it's, um, well, effectively, a uh, 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 an information session. Yes, it's me. Uh, thank you. And uh, Councillor Judd was the chairman. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, it was, uh, this was a, another briefing session about the new development, and uh, we had a very good attendance of uh, interested people come along, and uh, I thought it was a very uh, worthwhile exercise. And I know there's a number of ideas are put up that the uh, uh, hobbies are asking to be included in the Designed and yesterday and things like that. So I think um, uh, I think we some good ideas we've taken on board that night. So yeah, yeah. thank you, Councillor Judd. I I do uh, endorse those remarks. I thought our uh, economic development manager and town planner uh, did a, a, an excellent uh, job in terms of their presentations. I think uh, Councillor Judd, you uh, uh, chaired that session well in terms of trying to extract as much out. Of those in attendance as possible, and uh, so we commend you uh, for that. But I think there seemed to be a positive spirit uh, within uh, uh, within that particular supper room. So that was positive, and I thank all those councillors and staff that were able to make the time to to be there. And, and, and again, we're all committed to a genuine consultation phase as we we go through this um, this process. So. Thank you for that. So, Mr. General Manager, your advice is that uh, what we need to do is um, uh, is a motion to note the information I session. Think that's required, Mr. So, Council Judd. I'll move that way. Um, second, the Council Power move. And second, that all those of that opinion, please say aye. Uh, aye. Contrary, no. Clear the meeting. Yeah, let me clear the motion to carry. Thank you. And I said there, and I think you have to be that uh, we'll take the aviation. They stay clean along with us. Of course, they're our best publicity. We've got they've been our best in the past, and they can be our best promotion of the future. I think that's uh, it's very important we have everyone on side. So, yep. thank you, Councillor Judd. I think every single councillor and staff member would agree with those remarks, and um, uh, I think that uh, I think everyone seems to be uh, in the same space in that regard. So. Thank you very much. Now, no further committee reports. We now proceed to page 107, the delegates' reports. Do we have any delegates' reports, please? Councillor Smith. Uh, yeah, the Real Museum meeting on 27th of August uh, was, uh, there was five meetings, which they have out there. As, as their group and uh, Councillor Oliver and myself were both there. Everything seemed to run along reasonably well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Reasonably yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, Robert Maslin was elected the um, chair and president, whatever they call him. Oh, yes, yeah, so that's at the, the Bundawarra. Yeah. Yes, yes. 
So he'd be, because I think Mr. Maslin Sr. was also the chairman, wasn't he? Mm. So that's keeping it in the family, that's great. Very enthusiastic bunch of fellas out there, so mm. all they're growing old, but the rest of us. <laughs> God willing, that's right. Now uh, that's great. Thank you very much for that. Further delegates reports, Councillor Winky. Yeah, just an update on the Lachlan Regional Transport Committee. Uh, they haven't uh, haven't met for probably for the last three meetings and still continue not to meet at this stage. Although they're starting to talk about trying to have a uh, meeting somewhere. There has been a couple of councils pull out of that. I uh, haven't haven't paid uh, coming forward. I think Parks was one and um, Blaney was that one. Really, do, do, Councillor Winky, do you know why? No, there was no no indication. So your your advice to, to council and that previously it's been that you believe it's good for us to have a seat at the table. Well, at this stage, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. yeah from here on in, I, I think they're starting to question too as to whether we're going to uh, possibly get the emails that are coming through. Yeah. So uh, we need to have a meeting to sort of discuss that mm -hmm. whether we can do that. Yep. Right, so just uh, you'll just keep us informed. Of, yeah. Thanks, Councillor Winky. And, and I've also registered for an online uh, session with the Inland Rail as to whether up to it. Excellent. Thank you, Councillor Winky. We'll have an update coming up on that. We'll get to the last session. Thank you very much. If you could keep Councillor informed of that too, please, if there's anything relevant, we'd be very grateful. Thank you, Councillor Winky. Uh, further delegates reports, the Deputy Mayor. No questions to there. Yeah, we've um, <coughs> just had another Australia Day meet, meeting. Meeting, meeting. Um, yeah, at this stage we're sort of still planning on and uh, running the um, system of the year, doing the system of the year. Uh, but as far as having a um, public um, meeting, well, we're not too sure yet, just to see what happens in the next few months. Um, but yeah, at the moment we're calling for nominations for senior junior system here. So if you know anyone or people who should be prompted into putting someone up, would be much appreciated if you could do that. And also, had the last week a meeting in the Lake Committee, the first one for six months, and um, not there was a real lot to report. I could I think it's an indication of the season that's going to be. They've already had uh, over, taken up well over $2,000 in um, uh, launch fees already. And uh, the season, hasn't, well, I suppose the real diehards could be out there screen now. But, uh, yeah, but uh, so, yeah, we're lucky to have a very full lake. And um, I think we're going to see a lot of use of that this year. Um, another thing with. Um, um, Golden Fields um, have just accepted a tender to replace a uh, section of the main pipeline from right between Dugong and Harden. And um, it's a 450 and, and, and 500 mil pipe, so it's quite a large pipe. Quite a few million dollars worth of work. Mm -hmm. So it's um, something that's been in the pipeline for a couple of years and it's finally uh, going to start. So, and once that's sort of up and going, then uh, the next project will be the Fenarian, replace the Fenarian pipeline, so, which I think will start next year. The uh, Councillor Smith grinning from ear to ear. <laughs> it's still all going to go through the pipeline, probably, so it's got a good amount of work done leading up to that. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. Councillor Judd. That's a question to Councillor Sinclair, though. Seeing your goal until the start did a substitute job on the end of our scheme, are they going to be used on these other? New pipelines or not, or contractors? No, the, con yeah. the contract, this one's contract, this one. So probably, if it come to a crunch, they probably could have done it, but it's a you know, 500 mil pipe, it's a big, big, big pipe, and so it's, it's more of a specialist company job, really. So the equipment have got it quite suited to the smaller pipes, like they're doing out at the end of our screen, but um, yeah, there's a fairly big equipment for this one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, further dele delegates' reports. I just had uh, in relation to Rerock. Uh, the uh, all other councils across the footprint uh, of Rerock have uh, renewed uh, or made their commitment 
for the membership for uh, the two years, except Riverina Water have, uh, have indicated they will be there for one more year. Uh, very pleased that uh, Goldenfields Water has uh, recommitted as well. So, uh, so that's really um, terrific news uh, as far as we're concerned, as far as the general purpose councils. We're sorry uh, about Riverina Water. However, they're looking at their budget bottom line as well. And uh, uh, so we're sorry to see them go, but we respect the decision uh, that they have made. Uh, and the annual meeting of, of Rerock uh, will take place on Friday, the 20 uh, something of October. I just can't quite remember, the 23rd, is it? Something like that. So, um, so that will be, uh, that will take place then. Uh, and that's all delegates reports that I had. Nothing further, no. If not, good home. 23rd. 23rd, thank you. Got to somewhere in there. Uh, <clears throat> Councils, we proceed over in your business paper to page 108, the Mayor's report for the month of August. And there is a recommendation on the page 110 that Council notes the report. Thank you, Councillor Winky. Councillor Smith, thank you. Moved and seconded. Uh, is there further discussion? If not, I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. 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 No. Clear the motion to carry. Thank you. Page uh, 111, motion receiving staff reports, please. Councillor Oliver, Councillor Reinhold, moved and seconded. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Clear the motion to carry. Thank you. Uh, councillors, we go over to a uh, most uh, gross and report on 112, uh, the general manager's report, starting with 7.1. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The calendar of events, um, and as for the previous few months, nothing from our meetings. Although, that special occasion we had out here, we certainly uh, could have done it. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. Uh, Councillor Oliver, you're moving the calendar of events to be noted. Second for the motion of the Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Moved and seconded. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Uh, Contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you very much. Over to page 113, 11.2, the seal of the General Manager. Uh, yes, as you can see there, Mr Mayor, the transfer of um, land to Goldfields Water County Council for the water tower uh, and the sale of 145 Britannia Street. Thank you. Yes. Not a bad recommendation, but Councillor Joe. Are you happy with the value of the Dr. Britannia Street? Very much so. It's quite surprising. It was good, it was on the market, it was on the money. It's good. Right, Councillor Ryan, on your second motion. Thank you, moved and seconded. All those uh, further discussion? Not. Put the, uh, put the motion, all those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, page 114, the 11.3, the draft procurement policy, the general manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sense of deja vu here. <laughs> and, um, the draft procurement policy, as uh, Council were aware, it, it, uh, we received two submissions uh, in relation to it, which were considered of sufficient gravity to go back and rework the policy. That occurred at a workshop on the 2nd of September, uh, and this document is now brought back to Council for <laughs> Thank you, Mr. General Manager. Councillor McLaren. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to propose a minor amendment on page 120, um, just to clarify one small aspect of the policy. It was a new sentence. Um, Council reserves the right to suspend or cease dealings with contractors or suppliers who do not comply with any of the above principles. I just wanted to put at the beginning of that sentence by resolution of Council and then a comma. Um, I just thought that qualifies the statement so that we understand how such a decision would be made. Moving forward. Thank, thank you. Uh, Councillor McLaren, so not formally moving that yet, you're just I'm putting just that out there. That yes. To qualify that, it's a bit ambiguous at the moment. Yeah. I just wanted to put by resolution of council and then the rest okay. of Okay, the thank you, Sue. So, uh, Councillor McLaren is not moving that uh, just yet. It's just to put it out there for councillors to uh, comment on or discuss, Councillor Slade. I do have a concern. I, I think it's becoming more ambiguous. 
um, by resolution of council, such and such will happen. I think, in fact, it is such and such will happen by resolution of council. Happy to. Well, at the end, <laughs> with grammar. School. I, sorry, but I, I, I think that, that is that's actually the point that council will have a say in whether or not uh, somebody will be banned, basically. Yeah, um, see, well, I suppose when I read it, uh, Councillor Slay and, and uh, to Councillor McLaren, but when I read it saying council reserves the right, I, I thought you know council meant council laws. However, I can yeah. understand how some can think well. Perhaps we need to uh, tease that out a bit and, uh, and clarify it. Mr General Manager, do you, do you have any discussion or, sorry, any comment or thought? Not as such. I don't, I don't have a problem with, uh, with the intent of change. Um, and, and in fact, you know, th there would be instances where uh, in my intention was that that would come back to Council. The only time I could see a problem is where you have um, what uh, staff would see as appalling behaviour, um, say abuse of a staff member or something like that. Um, that relies on council's um, uh, support uh, to cease operations. But I, I can tell you, if, if um, you know one of the the um, suppliers um, abused the staff member or. Um, you know, behaved in a way that wasn't um, acceptable in, in my view, uh, we wouldn't be dealing with them, um, you know, whether can, we had council support or not. Yeah. So you would um, make that, you would make that call, and this is of course an extremely absolutely, absolutely, uh, because I, example, I, but there, there, are other, there are other things at play, and that is um, uh, workplace health and safety. Uh, there's a requirement for me as CEO of an organisation, general manager of the organisation, to have to provide a safe workplace. Now, if that's if that's being, um, this is by the way, extremely yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, unusual and unlikely, but it could happen. Just pointing that out, um, that um, you know we we would still not deal with someone if they were threatening or whatever else. So do you believe, Mr General Manager, what you have just said that should be included in there? Yeah, as, as I said, I, I, I don't have a problem with that, but we, we would be, uh, yeah, you know, be. Th there are some things that override. Uh, that's right, but should that be captured here as well? No, I don't think so. I think, you don't I, think that's no, your operational... I think that's, that's fine, uh, but there are there are some overriding factors as well. Uh, well, thank you very much. Well, 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 like. I, 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 I pick up your point, and I thank you for it. But I'm just a little bit concerned. Are you worried that A, council might not support such an action in that case uh, because of a failure on our part to understand something? Or are you suggesting that if that happened, that event happened the day after the council meeting, it would be another month I before think, any action could be taken? I think both those, the former though, would be, I would hope, would be extremely So do I. Uh, uh, you know, it's possible, but it's extremely unlikely. Yeah. Um, probably more the latter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank but you, you don't want to include it as such. You just want to. Is that what no, you're no, saying? no. I well, just, that's the general yeah. manager's yeah. privilege. No, I that's, suppose. that's yeah. fine. Makes sense. So yeah, just as long as the council of the day. I, I'm just worrying about this, Mr. General Manager. That, that this current council are aware of of that. Uh, I, I just wonder whether you know if there is a new council, as there will be. Well, well, things like the Workplace Health and Safety Act. Override any council policy. Just like yeah. So you know, yeah. if I consider that there's a there's a but potential of the breach right. of workplace health and safety, then yes, but could that not be encompassed in here as well? Oh no, I don't think so. Oh. I, I think I'm I'm happy with the proposed amendment. I'm bringing the council's attention. Oh, well, we're grateful that you've done so. Okay. Any other comments in relation to what Councillor McLaren has uh, suggested? If not, Councillor Clare. I'm happy to move on the end of the sentence. We put by resolution of council. In relation to that, we adopt the policy G3 procurement policy uh, with the inclusion of uh, what you've just indicated. Yes, thank you. Thank you. By resolution of council. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, move that way. Is there a second? Thank you. Councillor Slade. Move for a second of discussion. 
If not, I'll put the motion. All those that opinion, please say aye. aye. Uh, country no. Fair the motion carry. Thanks very much. Uh, Councillors, let's now go to page 124. 11.4, the Code of Conduct, the General Manager. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Councillors, we're required to adopt uh, as a minimum standard the, uh, the Code of Conduct, uh, the model Code of Conduct as provided by the State Government. Um, the, the, this is really uh, very minor. Uh, impact on, on this council. It deals mainly with uh, some ambiguity and lack of um, uh, rigour around uh, censuring of councillors and uh, disciplinary action against council. Um, there's a couple of smaller amendments there. They're lifting the cap from $50 to $100. Uh, items of $10 were not to be considered as gifts, so they don't have to be declared as such. Uh, as I said, very, very minor um, uh, changes, but the, the recommendation is that the model code of conduct uh, be adopted. I, I would suggest that even just for, uh, for the sake of the exercise, we just put it out for 28 days and then bring it back to... Uh, we've got no choice but to adopt it, but... <laughs> yeah. Deputy Mayor. I'll move that way. I think it's, it gives the general <coughs> public a chance to have their say if they've got what, if they're not happy. And, I can come back down the track and say. Councillor Smith, second. Councillor Smith, second most. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Uh, so, yes, so we're uh, saying that um, we put this model code with its uh, amendments to lifting the cap from $50 of gifts to $100. I mean, that's the sky's the limit, Councillor. Yeah. Uh, discussion? Yeah, I just look as though I've been swallowing the grammar book out between meetings. <laughs> Can we go down to training and counselling? And which is on the three quarters of the way down. Oh, yes, page one, two. What it says here counsellors may seek to avoid public censure and not to repeat their conduct before the investigator finalises the report to counsel. Now, I'm sorry, but that, that's not ambiguous, that's just downright careless grammar. <laughs> If we, put, if we put it at the beginning, before the investigator finalises their report to council, then councillors may seek to avoid public censure and so on and so forth. Otherwise, it looks as though all that we are forbidding is that they don't repeat their conduct before he writes his report. Yeah. And that's not what we mean, is it? We, no, mean, it's not what we, mean. we want it done. Yeah. It, it's just it gives us a chance before yeah. the report is finalised, it gives us a chance to make amends. That's correct. That's okay. it. So just the simple juxtaposition of what <laughs> last clause. Thank you. And pleasing to see you. And I probably won't read another grammar book for that. Pleasing to see you. Obviously, don't have the right opinion. Well, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Slay. Uh, so, the move and second are happy to with that appropriate uh, amendment. <laughs> Uh, thank you, uh, just to mention that uh, due to the, the dates, the 28 days, it won't come back until November. Council, happy with that. Yep. Thank you very much. Uh, there's no further discussion on grammatical corrections, etc. I'll, I'll put the motion. All those without opinion, please say aye. Aye. Country no. I declare that motion carried. I, I thank you very, very much. Uh, now, Mr. General Manager, is there anything of an urgent, late nature for Council to consider? Uh, no. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Now, let's go to page 208, the Department of Engineering Services, 12.1, uh, Springdale Speed Zone, the Engineering Technical Manager. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. The report is as written. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. I think the manager would be pleased to an extent uh, with the response from Transport to New South Wales? Uh, yeah, definitely. I, um, I, I compromise, I'd say. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. But makes, in my views, it makes sense. Yes. And I'm surprised. Councillor Oliver? Oh, I just said it's consistent with the other yeah. images and tangible. Oh, through Mr Mayor, after the last um, council resolution, we contacted a couple of other councils and found where they'd um, 
undertaken some speed. Oh, Stock and Mingle was the one that stuck out. They'd undertaken a speed zone review at Stock and Mingle in the last 12 months and it resulted in no change or resulted in retaining a 60 kilometre hour. So that sort of, um, I think, gave us a bit of um, leverage in, in our reasoning, which, um, yeah, they've reconsidered it and come back with a good result. Well, I think it just goes to show uh, councils and staff that if this council believes strongly in something, regardless of whether it was uh, uh, the former RMS and now Transport for New South Wales, then we should stand up, speak our piece and advocate strongly for it. We mightn't always win, but uh, sometimes a part wins better than no win. Uh, so anyway, well done council and our officers for um, uh, certainly uh, acting on council's decision. Uh, councillors, there is a recommendation on page 208 that uh, that correspondence from Transport for New South Wales be noted. Councillor Oliver, we've moved that way. Councillor Smith, moved and seconded. <coughs> Further discussion? Not, I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. 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 Contrary, no. <coughs> Clear the motion carried. Thank you. Uh, anything of an urgent, late nature from the engineering technical manager or the works manager? No. Thank you. Quiet, eh? It's business as usual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Councillors, over to page 210, Environmental Services Department Report, 13.1, uh, a, a, a DA application, the Director. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, this is a modification of some conditions that were imposed on a, a business. A uh, report prepared by our town planner and uh, as written. Thank you very, thank you very much. There's a lot of, obviously, a lot of fitness freaks uh, in Tamora Shire. That's for sure. Haven't you joined up yet, Mr Mayor? Pardon? Haven't you joined yet? No, no, just the Lake Loop. That's my, you know, my area for uh, working out. <laughs> you got some lycra, <laughs> haven't you? But, no, but we're not going there. We're about to have dinner later. Uh, councillors, there is an application before you uh, to consider. Councillor McLaren. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Just a question for the Director. Um, is the <clears throat> trial period for three months, um, is there ability to withdraw the change in hours at the end of that three months? Yeah, yes. That's that, the intent of the trial. Yeah. Do you think three months is long enough? Uh, I do, uh, especially it's the summer months. It will be the warmer months, so if there's any... Uh, opportunity for uh, the roller door to be opened, or you know, th I think that's when the uh, the noise could occur. But uh, the applicants agreed to undertake some noise mitigation measures, and and you know, including air conditioning and some acoustic tiles. So I'm confident that there won't be an issue. But if there is, we have the ability to um, revert back to the original hours. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Oliver. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to move the recommendation. Thank you. So you're moving the recommendation that appears on page 211, 212. Thank you, second Councillor Reinhold. Thank you, moved and seconded. Uh, further discussion? No further discussion. Oh, we, we have to raise yes, yeah. yep. uh, Councillors, I'd ask uh, all those of that opinion to please raise your hands. This motion is carried unanimously. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Council, we now proceed over to page 216, 13.2, Drought Communities Program. Uh, I will be uh, declaring an interest uh, as Chairman of the Tamora Local Health Advisory Committee, and uh, I'll hand the gavel to the Deputy Committee. And I'm uh, declaring a junior interest as the Vice President of the Narraburra Social and Community Centre. Okay, councillors, that leaves the report on the Drought Communities Program and Vets projects. And, uh, money is vets uh, that could not be. Uh, or finished, or started, uh, and as the... Yeah, I guess that's... Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
The uh, uh, councils, as you can see, uh, we had a number of events uh, under the draft communities program which are required to be completed by uh, December, although they have given a, a bit of an extension on that to March. Uh, we contacted uh, the four groups uh, and asked them what their, their views were. As you can see, the responses are the uh, local health advisory committee had um, purchased some equipment uh, in preparation for it. Uh, they were just banners and, and uh, parks and things like this. Uh, so they'd already spent uh, $1,269 of the uh, $4,000, uh, but the, the $2,730 that's left, they've asked that that be reallocated. The Area Park Community Group, um, same deal, I had $7,000. Uh, they've requested that um, be spent on another uh, Area Park project. The LHAC reaching out uh, had um, uh, $6,000, which they've, uh, they've used for uh, um, health paraphernalia, uh, promotional activities. Uh, so they've offered the, the other 3000 back to council to reallocate. And the Narraborough Church Social <coughs> Group is still of the opinion that they will be holding their event in March next year. So essentially, uh, if you follow that through, there's uh, what, seven, um, seven and uh, nine thousand seven hundred, uh, twelve thousand seven hundred dollars that uh, has to be reallocated. Okay, Councillor Oliver. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, I'd like to put my hand up for the um, for the Gidgenbunk building. Um, we've run a little, little bit short of money. Um, the estimations of the signs and. Um, and the uh, railing at the front of the will be more than we anticipated. Um, we're probably can I just ask a question on that? Can I just ask a question on that? Was that funded under the draft communities program? Yes. The second round it was. This is the second round, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is. So it, there was funding under that program. Yeah, we got seven and a half thousand dollars allocated. Oh, okay. okay, that's okay. Yes. So uh, yeah, as I said, um, perhaps should have got asked for ten thousand dollars but the twenty seven hundred dollars would help us out we've got signs we've got information signage that we need to put in there um, we've painted the building ourselves to save that that saved us around about two and a half three thousand dollars in doing that with flavor costs uh, the visitation um, signage we've done uh, is, is necessary for the visitors in the caravan park to see where there's, um, you know, supermarkets, um, places to get a meal, that sort of thing. And so far, the the um, compliments that we've been given on what's there already, um, I think, justifies the project that we put in place. So that's signed on. So if we get that two and a half, twenty seven hundred dollars, that would go a long way to help us out. I guess, well, my thoughts support on. I know one of the um, projects, projects that um, the Mr. Project said are looking for additional funding. The one that I perhaps thought we should be perhaps looking at is the um, the water storage dam. Uh, only because you're only going to get one go at that. Um, the budget for it is already very tight. Um, so I, I, I'd like to. You know, I think there's something we need to put as much money towards as we possibly can. Engineer. Through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, yeah, I certainly didn't ask for additional money. I think this is coming from Claire. Uh, any money will help. There's no risk about that. However, I'm more than willing to work within the budget. You know, I haven't, I guess I haven't right across this report, but one job that I will say will be short of money is this broken down heritage trail. If they don't get the extra money, they won't get the job done. Um, I'd be happy to put some support behind additional money there. The water storage dam, I'm, like I said just before, I'm, I can work for the budget. And if there is spare money left, happy to take it. But I'm certainly not. I'd prefer to see the other smaller projects get done first. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Council, 
Oh, I was only asking um, from the area park, uh, sorry, the Broken Dam Heritage Trail, that they're talking 29 20, is that sufficient to complete the job? Uh, to be honest, it's a job that the committee's undertaking. However, I know with the money they've got and what they're trying to do, it's a absolutely paper thin them. budget. They've got a definite quote from the contract to do it. That's spot on, though. So, oh, yeah. okay. I'd like to say, as someone said before, when there's only one crack to do it properly, and I'd like to see it finished as well. So. Okay, Councillor Wiggy. Yeah, I'd like to endorse, endorse uh, your remarks in regard to the water storage. I'd like to see some money go towards that as well, but uh, I still feel that at Area Park funding out there probably should stay at Area Park. And uh, what they use out there, it goes back to the Area Park um, community and let them decide where it should be spent or, or what I don't know. Okay. So. Further comments or? Oh, the director's not here now, but uh, speaking to the director about the pool upgrade, he seemed to tell me that he's going a bit short to, you know, to finish off the carols properly. So the, yeah, that's the, uh, as well as the broken dam one, that's quite the same. I think I'd be going towards trying to finish the pool a little bit as well. So. Yeah. So have, have. How much money was it? Uh, 10,000, uh, sorry, 12,000. Yeah. I don't know, perhaps we'll discuss anyway that we've got, uh, we've got the railway station was 2,700 and broken uh, in cars 2,900. Okay, so at least if we go ahead with the uh, Broken Dam Heritage Trail and the, uh, the uh, railway set, set or uh, work, or, yeah, give you a bunch of, give you a bunch of debt, sorry, that would leave about $7,000 to allocate. Okay. What does the pool need? Chris is looking at. As you say, there's still small money that would be useful for the pool. What's that value? Well, I'll put a lot of point to ask the director, really. But, um, oh, right, yeah. okay, yeah. But if you want to keep the original 7,000 very far, you know, I would say 4,000 to a pool. But not to I think that's why I look at it too. You should keep the 7,000 area park because that's where it was originally allocated to. Um, how they spend it out there is best up to them. And um, we go for the um, Gidget Bone building, and that leaves three grand, but you can put more dirt out for more, I suppose. Another wheelbarrow and pull. <laughs> okay, well, that's how you feel it, and it's all like a motion. Well, I'll move that way. That'd be allocated, yeah. that'd be allocated um, for the uh, for the walking trail in it uh, from Broken Dam. Yeah. Four thousand for the pool. And four thousand for the pool. Twenty seven hundred for the pool. Twenty seven for the still there. Twenty seven thirty for the run. Um, the Gidgen Bank exciting building. We build a new one for that. Guess all of you. And so three thousand for that thing. Okay, we'll do have a, a letter. I'll take a second. Second slide. Further discussion. After further discussion, I put the motion over in favour. All right. Next.
to uh, the uh, Kijibung uh, Railway Shed, uh, the Jotham Heritage Trail, um, the uh, Airy Park Pool, and the remaining money to the, uh, the um, Garden Street Dam. Excellent. Thank you very much. And thank you. Uh, councillors for your support of those groups that the director and I have been involved with. It's, um, we appreciate that. Uh, thank you, Mr Deputy Mayor, for stepping in. Uh, nothing of an urgent late nature from the director? Uh, nothing, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much. Now, page 224, the Director of Administration Finance Report 14.1, records for destruction, the director. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so just some records to be destroyed um, as per GA39. Destruction of records. So Councillor Oliver, Councillor McLaren, move and second it. Discussion? If not, motion. All those with opinion, please say aye. 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 Contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you. Page 226, 14.2, office closure. The director. <laughs> so, uh, this is just a report uh, asking council uh, if we can close the council offices between the Christmas and New Year period. This would be uh, pretty much in line with what we've done in previous years, uh, just to keep staff during the break. Council Smith. Moved that way. Council Winky, seconding the motion. Yeah. Thank you. Moved and seconded that the recommendation be adopted. And as the director has pointed out, councillors, it is, um, I suppose, council's way of, uh, of thanking uh, our staff that uh, <coughs> uh, that give so much. And obviously, uh, the director knew uh, wholeheartedly support the recommendation that's before us. So I'll move, uh, put the motion to you. If there's no further discussion, all those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Clear the motion. Carry it. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillors, over to page 227, 14.3, the Town Hall Income, the Director. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. So this is a report that I've uh, written in response to last month's Council meeting um, in relation to the Town Hall decision attempting to reduce the fees. So I've set out some uh, the basic fees that we currently charge for the Town Hall usage. And I've given some data there in relation to the last four years' usage and revenue that we've earned over the last four years. Um, yes, yeah, so that's pretty much for your information. And um, I'll just yeah, point out that my last paragraph there where I say, well, the fees, if we decrease the fees, we might increase the usage. But just be mindful that that gap between income and expense will, will grow. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, Council, uh, the uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. 
Um, I actually think it's a good report in that it shows just the, the, you know, the use of the town hall in uh, the last few years and what it's probably costing us. Um, I don't consider those fees to be you know, over the top or too much. I think they're quite conservative fees, particularly now that the uh, now that it's all been, uh, you know, the exploit has been done up and so forth, or put on there. Um, I, I, I personally can't see how it's going to change the usage if we drop, we uh, drop the fees or, or you know, drop back the cost of the fees. Um, I'm quite sure once this, once we get past this COVID restrictions that. Uh, the use of the town hall will pick up. Um, I think with the uh, boy and now it's going to, it should really boost the usage of the town hall. So I, I can't see that by yeah, even halving the, the, the fees, it's going to make that much difference to the use of the, of the facility. So, Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Uh, Councillor Winky, I know this is something that you just flagged. At our last meeting for council to tease out and consider. Do you have any comments? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd, I'd just like to congratulate the director for, uh, for putting these figures together. It's, it's been, uh, I think, a, a well worthwhile exercise and possibly something, you know, we just probably need to just keep an eye on every five years or something and you know, give, give it time to get over COVID and, and, let, and let's see what happens in five years' time. So, you know, from there. Thank you. I agree, Councillor Winky. I think it was a great exercise. To go through, it's really opened our eyes in terms of uh, uh, the income uh, versus expenditure. Obviously, there's a community service obligation in council to uh, provide this magnificent facility. Um, uh, again, when the director points out uh, on page 227 of the report over the four year period, the total income for the Memorial Hall was 32,349, with over a third. Uh, being waived in uh, uh, by council or related to usage by council, so you know, that's a significant uh, figure as well. But again, uh, at least they've been teased out. Council are aware of it. Uh, thank you, Councillor Barry. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I I did want to note a bit of a trend between excluding 2020. Um, the number of hirings by event did seem to be on a downward trend from 17, 18, 19, like the community event events went from 41 to 19, the commercial activity went from 18 to two, and the school function went from four to one. So there might be some questions to ask why those trends are going down. I, I understand the income side, I'm just curious why, they, why, why it wasn't stable. That was before COVID, so I don't know. Thank you, the director. Yeah, so it was closed for a couple yeah, of months. There was a renovation. The worst done before 2018. There you go. Yeah. Note closed during 2018. Is that right? 19? No, no, yeah, the whole year. So, so not the whole year, but yeah. half the one in. Half, and what about 18? Was it closed in 18? Uh, no. Yeah. So you can only compare 17 and 18. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Slay. I think it's interesting to note that you probably don't think there'll be much of a drop in income. Oh yeah, the people will come back after coronavirus and they will naturally want to use a array of facilities. I'm not quite I'm not quite as convinced as that because I've heard a number of people saying, making comments, they don't run through them. Um, but they just all have them from different organisations making comments that uh, I don't know whether we will use the town hall because it's a bit much. And I'm thinking, for example, of the, the Red Kite slash um, Cancer Support Group. Um, well, it's almost an embarrassment when we have a Red Kite concert that you've got one-sixth of the hall is used. It'd probably be cheaper if that was moved down to the Leeds Club or whatever we call it, the Services, Services Club. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's a bit, a bit touchy, but you're, you're doing some crystal balling and your crystal balling might well be right, and I hope that you are right. Could I suggest then that as a compromise, uh, 
that in 12 months' time, it'd be reviewed again very, very carefully when we've got some hard data because it's probably a bit too much to predict otherwise. So let's not cut it because you don't want to, you don't want to lose profits. But let's remember our social obligations as well, as the Mayor pointed out. Uh, and in 12 months' time, can we make market for a review? And if we get that sort of a detailed report, I think the review will be based on some very good data. Thank you, Councillor Slade. Councillor Judd. Oh, I'd just like to I don't agree with Councillor Sinclair about his comment about the FOIA. I think it was really, people who really haven't seen the potential of that yet. And I, think, no, I think once things get back to normal, I think the FOIA will be, especially, will be a great demand. I think so. Uh, thanks, Councillor Judd. I, I agree very, very strongly uh, with those remarks. Uh, Councillors, I, I, I'm in your hands. I, I think that I saw some nods when Councillor Slay mentioned about uh, reviewing the town hall income versus expenditure usage in uh, 12 months from now, which I suppose would be, well, the new council will be, um, so that's something for the new council to consider. The Deputy Mayor. Yeah, I guess that's okay. It all depends on the next 12 months. Just Mm. How long this COVID thing goes on, when it, and what the restrictions are going forward on the sort of usage of things. So, yeah, maybe 12 months might be just a little bit too short, but I think it's something we can sort of keep, yeah, just keep an eye on. Keep an eye, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, remember, you'll be revisiting it as well, the, the, the fees and charges uh, process as well. So, that's obviously council. This council will look at that again uh, for um, the next year. I think, as Councillor Judge said, the function on Saturday, I think, really showed the potential of the of the uh, area in front here in Oxford. Um, you couldn't have got a, a better day, and everything went perfect. But you know, it really showed the potential of that. Uh, of the, of the right, particularly when the fridge fridges work, and uh, <laughs> our executive uh, assistant, God bless her, and the, <laughs> I just thank. Mrs. Rand, very much again in this forum, just I know I'm slightly digressing, but uh, for Mrs. Rand to just have a feeling at 7 a.m. in the morning, I'm going to check to see how the drinks are going. And thank God she did. And um, I, I just, I know how much uh, Mrs. Rand thinks of uh, Mr. James too. So, but anyway, we thank you very much for that, the general manager, for, for your efforts in that space. Uh, Councillor Judd. I'll just go on here. I know that with Rotary last year, nearly 12 months ago, we held two functions that associated with the, the theatre and, you know, movie premieres and, and you know, um, cocktails and in the foyer. And those two nights were exceptional nights. You know, so, and I think once the theatre opens again, it gets back to normal, you'll see um, sales will be happening again. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Okay, uh, Councillor Smith. Well, it's like Saturday. Uh, and I thought it went off very, very well. And I, uh, Mrs. Rand's done a fantastic job and her offside. But if there was no COVID thing, how bit we wouldn't have put them in there if we would have filled the town hall. Yes. Yeah. You know, we were restricted. That's right. To who we could uh, have. Exactly. But we would have filled the town hall. Oh, easy. Those people. This is where the frustration for Mr. James and Mrs. James, they had a guess list that they wanted hundreds of, of people. But uh, anyway, I think they were more than grateful uh, from what they've said uh, with what Council did for them. Mm. Thank you. Uh, the Deputy Mayor. Thank you. I just move that the, the town hall fees and all town hall visits be monitored over the next. Yeah. Turn of council. council. Yeah, turn of council. Yeah, yeah. Something. So, yeah, something needs to, to be reviewed within the next term of the new council. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, rather put a timeline on it because we're just not sure where things are going to go from the next four months or so. so Councillor Slay, are you. No, that's fine. I don't. Perfect. I understood. Okay, so moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? If not, I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. <coughs> Turn the motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, we now proceed, councillors, to page 229.
14.4 Gigi Bung Land, the director. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, um, this is some correspondence that I received from um, someone from the Department of Finance. They've got a small parcel of land out at Gitchinburg, 1,004 square metres, um, that, as you can see, was originally purchased for a post office back in 2012. It's surplus to their requirements now. So, they approached us to see if we would be interested in taking over ownership of the property. Um, and I'll just note that's the former director uh, of finance actually said the council would be happy to take it on at no cost to council. And, and with COVID, things fell off the bandwagon on the department's end. And so now um, they're just getting back to us to confirm our resident interest. Thank you. Just a question for the director in relation to that. So what you're saying he provided at no cost, so that's in terms of the actual land. Correct. So is there anything that would have to be done uh, to that particular land in terms of fencing or anything? Um, so through you, Mr Mayor. Yeah. So uh, currently the Crown Reserve is leased to uh, the some adjoining landowners. And this parcel of land that's owned by the Home Office is not actually fenced off. So he's actually already got access to this parcel of land. So I was yeah, all of those Proposing signs. that we would just add it to the lease and continue to use it as it is. Wouldn't cost you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor. I'll move the recommendation. We are moving the recommendation on page 229, second Councillor McLaren. Move and second. Is there further discussion? <coughs> no, if not, I'll put the motion. All those without opinion, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Third motion carried. Thank you very much. Anything of an urgent late nature from the general manager? Uh, <laughs> motion, sorry. <laughs> from the director? No. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, page 232, we go to uh, correspondence 15.1 event application. The general manager. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. As you can see, councillors, there's an application from St Anne's for their uh, garden viewing. Uh, which is intended to be held on Sunday, the 25th of October. Um, uh, is any objection from council? But one stipulation I think we should put is that uh, subject to the provision of a complying coded safe plan uh, as required by the government. Council Oliver. I'll move that their request be with that condition. Thank you. So you're, grant, uh, you're moving that we grant approval uh, to their request uh, subject to a suitable COVID safe plan. Thank you, Councillor Reinhold. Moved and seconded. Is there a further discussion? Councillor McLaren. Um, are they required to have a, a public liability insurance policy valid for that event, or does it come under council? Can you speak up, sorry. Council. Does it come under council's public liability on a council park like that? Um, yeah, it's it's a school event. It's so that's covered by so the school. It comes under their public liability. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Uh, if there's no further discussion, it's a, it's sort of a, a local iconic event, really, isn't it? I know one of the chief organisers here in the chamber looking at every councillor to make it. <laughs> but uh, it is a tremendous event, and uh, we congratulate the school and all involved. Uh, I'll put the motion to you, which has been moved and seconded. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Clear the motion to carry. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillors, over to page 234, 15.2, the Trotting Club, the General Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillors, this is an event uh, or a, an organisation that we sponsor, uh, have sponsored for some time uh, annually. Um, the sponsorship, as you can see there, is uh, $500 plus GST. Uh, they've sent us a, a bill with it, but um, it, it is something we've supported for some time now. Thank you. Councillor Smith? Move the sponsorship. So we've done it for a large number of years. Thank you. So you're moving that way. Second to Councillor Judd, uh, that we do that uh, discussion on the motion. <coughs> uh, Councillors, it is a great uh, event and, and the club is um, uh, a good and strong one. I, I just I, I just normally don't see um, uh, a presumptive uh, tax invoice sent uh, before a uh, council has uh, had a chance to uh, 
uh, considerate. Uh, every organisation works and they're all volunteers and they do a great job. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm sure that uh, you can't blame them for trying, I suppose, is the bottom line. And, so and, and, that's, <laughs> and the tradition, uh, recent tradition, that we have sponsored them for that amount. So I suppose uh, they can be forgiven uh, <laughs> on this occasion. Uh, so, councillors, we have a motion uh, by dep the Deputy Mayor and Council Judge that we approve that. Uh, sorry, Councillor Smith, I beg your pardon, uh, has moved that and, and can't, can't read my writing. Uh, and Councillor Judge, that we accede to the request in relation to a gold package of $550. No further discussion, I'll put the motion. All those that opinion, please say aye. Thank you, no. Thank you very much. Uh, page 237, 15.3, Cars and Coffee, the General Manager. Yes. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, Council, this is a, an interesting event. Uh, it goes back a, a little way, but um, uh, this is really for this organisation to, uh, to put their toes in the water and, um, and run a small event this year, given the current circumstances. Um, and, and as such, they've asked council to uh, to um, provide uh, the facility free of charge, with the exception of our pocket costs. We've got staff costs. We've got staff out there the whole time, and they pay all those, of course. But um, th there's a couple of things in here that I think we need to be wary of. Uh, one is that we again we need the COVID safe plan. But the second thing is that. This will actually close the airport to air traffic uh, during that period uh, because uh, at the same time, runway 936, so 936 will be closed. Is that the 30 person? Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Not at point in time, we'll be working on a taxiway near gla uh, Grass Runway, closer to few cars. Uh, Okay, so they'll still be able to use the runway. Right, Sorry, right. well that's good. Uh, right. So there will still be, and and it'll be um, uh, you know, for a, for a small period of time. Uh, I think about three hours, morning and afternoon, uh, in that event. They're talking, I think, twenty to forty cars, but they want to hold a major event here in time, which will be um, 100, 100, 200, 150, 200 cars. Mm. Um, it, it's got the potential to be a major. Uh, tourist event because of the type of cars there, European marks, uh, and um, you know, highly valuable, um, have a great amount of interest, so people will come to see those vehicles uh, on display. Thank you. Mr General Manager, would you mind just on the bottom of page 238, I just can't quite make out the surname. <laughs> uh, the surname? Michael Goriatis. <laughs> Said with confidence, very Mate. good. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's great. Thank you, Mr. General Manager. It, it actually came about, uh, this event, uh, through, a, through an event we attended in Sydney uh, and we were approached by, by this group. And the, it is a really, uh, uh, you know, in, in times when the motels and that are doing it a bit tough, I think this is a really uh, uh, good event in terms of pushing. Uh, accommodation, there's two nights accommodation, there's meals and all the rest of it go with it. They're certainly a very reputable uh, organisation uh, from what we understand. So, Council Oliver. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Man. That's going to be a very busy weekend here in Tamora. We've got the Rail Motor Society running shuttles from Area Park to Tamora, and also on the 2nd of November, that same Monday after that uh, weekend, there's another heritage train pulling in as well. So. Hmm. So there'll be a bit of activity the, uh, going on. Automobiles and the trains. The trains, planes. <laughs> no, thank you, that's terrific. Uh, well, councillors, you've heard from the general manager in relation to that COVID safety uh, plan, which obviously and also the fact that they're prepared to pay the staff expenses, if that is something that council uh, would like to see. The Deputy Mayor. Thanks, Mayor. Yeah, yeah I, I think this is a great event. It has potential for us down, down the road in the next year or two. Um, um, hopefully, it was a, it, you know, the, the back end of the year or so when there's a, a, the, the full, full, um, full numbers turn up, yeah. uh, they can pay uh, 
uh, full charge or something for the use of the Air Force, but I think at this stage um, we're quite happy to pay staff, come staff or cover council costs. So I think that's probably good, good, just good way to go for this this year anyway. And um, yeah, just see how it all works. So I'll move that we uh, we um, um, approve the request. Approve the request. Yes. Uh, subject to the COVID safety yeah. plan and the um, reimbursement of staff expenses. And, and consultation, uh, yeah, uh, some consultation process will be used as our thing. Okay, so you're moving that way, second Councillor Smith moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Councillor Wink. And just a question on, uh, on car parking, is it going to be sufficient? There probably will be for this year. But down the track if we're starting to talk of the numbers that you're talking about. But what about park car parking yeah. at the airport? Yeah. Under yeah. normal circumstances, yeah. there's plenty of taxiways. Yeah. Yeah. There's plenty of room out there. Uh, it's just a matter of um, having the correct operational procedures to allow access, you know, whether it means closing the taxiway, of course you've got to talk to the residents mm -hmm. involved. For those of us with Fords and Tolkens are still Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Councillors, you have a motion before you in relation to cars and coffee uh, event. And if there's no further discussion, I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion. Very much. Now, uh, Councillors, uh, we have no. Uh, nothing of an urgent nature, Mr. Uh, no. No, thank you. <coughs> uh, Council's on page 244. Uh, we have, mm, do not have any uh, notices of motion before us. Uh, business without notice, and we shall go around the chamber and Council Reinhardt. Um, just a little, uh, the RV park. Oh, ah, yes. Looks fantastic. They're really keeping it uh, well maintained and I drove uh, home last night after work and there was nine vans parked in there. Wow. I that. Yeah. So, yeah, no, that's good. And, and I, I think sorry. the thing about that Councillor Ryan Mom yes. through the chair is that they wouldn't have they wouldn't have come to tomorrow if it wasn't there. Mm -hmm. You know, then they look they follow those around and it's uh, it's something positive. It's yeah. just kept tidy and mm. you know, it's really good. Really yeah. good. Thank you for that, Councillor Ryan. And I was out at the lake uh, also on the weekend, and oh, gosh, it's fantastic out there. Mm -hmm. People were on the play equipment and the gym and walking around. It was, it was good to see. So, uh, it's good to see. Well done. It's interesting, Captain. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. It's lovely to hear uh, those observations. Uh, uh, Councillor Oliver and I were at the Tomorrow West Public School Council meeting. They like to have an annual session for student leaders in the chambers. And uh, they just, you know, they talk some things about their school and some things about council. They had some excellent ideas, some of them perhaps may not float, uh, but uh, some of the things that they will write to this council to uh, ask them to consider. But uh, one of them was interesting that a young, I think one of the vice captains indicated they weren't aware of the off leash area that we had out there. So they're going to write to us um, just to perhaps see if we can look at enhanced. Um, you know, uh, promotion signings, etc. But uh, it was, yeah, it was uh, a sensible uh, um, a suggestion. So, uh, but again, praising council uh, for for that uh, beautiful facility. So, more broadly. So, thanks, Councillor Reinhardt. I shall now go to Councillor Oliver. Okay, thank you, Councillor Winky. I uh, just had a query on the a couple of days ago, Arch, actually, on on, on the. Um, Caravan Park out of the airport, is it still closed or did I? Uh, well, I only get on Saturday morning for you, Mr. Mayor, so. You, but you did? Or, or well, about this Saturday. This Saturday, okay, thank you. We've, we've been doing the necessary, necessary spruce up works, yeah. cleaning everything and getting it ready. Um, but yeah, there's lots of people travelling around and it's now viable to reopen. Yeah, we've got about, about nine caravans up in the showground. Yep. Yeah, we've got a lot of Thank you for teasing that out, Councillor Winky. That, I think that's good for all of us to, to be aware of and, and promote that fact, so thank you. 
Anything further, Councillor? No, no, thank you, Councillor McLaren. Nothing. Nothing. Thank you, <coughs> Deputy Mayor. Um, I'd just like to take an opportunity to thank the councillors for um, re-electing me as the, the Deputy Mayor. It, uh, it is very much appreciated, and uh, yeah, thank you for my for your trust in me. And uh, if you've got three issues, well, don't, don't be afraid to. Um, we can help you with yes issues that we can. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Deputy Mayor, and uh, again, we uh, thank you for your past service, and thank you for uh, uh, for all that you've done in terms of uh, certainly your support of myself and fellow councillors and staff. And uh, I deeply admire and respect your, uh, uh, let's say, measured uh, measured conduct and, and your commitment to to the council and, and to the community in the role as deputy mayor and uh, I'm proud to serve beside you so thank you. Uh, we go now to Councillor Smith. Thank you. Uh, Monday night we had our RFS Bucket One Quandary AGM and it was brought up there about the roadside vegetation being coming into the danger period and whether uh, council can negotiate with them or do whatever they want to do with that. But I just said, look, I'll bring it to council. It was brought up then, and I was up there again today at the station, and it was brought up again today, and I said, yes, it's coming up tonight. <laughs> so I just thought, right, I'll bring it up, whether they, you know, uh, spray it, <coughs> uh, you name it, I'm not in charge of that. <laughs> you guys up there could do that. Uh, but thank whatever you. you do, it's a bit of a worry to do because of the amount of light on the ground, you know. Thanks, Councillor Smith. Important point. Uh, the works manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We started uh, roadside uh, spraying uh, uh, and also we are working on slashing as well. Uh, the, uh, we had a, a meeting with RFS. Uh, Two months back and identified the hazard zone and we applied for the funding under RFS and uh, I haven't, I'm waiting to uh, hear uh, what was the outcome of that funding arrangement but we are starting slashing uh, uh, in house and also I'm engaging, uh, I'm planning to engage contractor in a week's time to attend to more slashing. So it's, uh, it's, it's a growth season and uh, we got lots of capital works, uh, plus maintenance work, and also there is an additional workload. So that's what we are planning to do in the next couple of weeks' time. So maybe we, we may be behind for a week or ten days, but then we'll catch up. Yep. Thank you very much. Thanks, Councillor Smith. The other thing was uh, one of the little taxi drivers uh, complained about the height of the hedges. Yes. And we might be able to get her a cushion. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Smith, uh, thank you for that. I, 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 uh, I do recall this being raised, uh, I think, by the same individual uh, on a regular basis uh, at uh, police and community consulting committee meetings. Uh, and again, obviously, it's an issue uh, to that individual, and, and I respect that. Uh, but I, I, I'm just not sure. I, I know the answer's always been that when we've had, we've even taken, I think, well, your chairman of the traffic committee, Councillor Smith, uh, they've deemed it not an issue. I think our engineering team have deemed it uh, not an issue, or previously, certainly. Uh, the engineer, do you have any comments? Manager? Uh, I think, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. If, if you see the normal process, it's look right. I don't know why we need to look beyond that point. So uh, that's, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I, I think, uh, yes, Councillor Smith, you're doing your job as a conscientious councillor in raising that concern. Yeah, I just thought maybe the cushion might be right into the taxi a bit because it's, it's a pretty small person. That's right. <laughs> You've done your, your job. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Smith. Anything further? No, thank right. you. Thank you. Councillor Judd, this is that notes. Uh, Councillor Oliver mentioned earlier about the rail moment coming to uh, Perry Park and tomorrow, at the end of October, and I think that's really good news. Uh, the lady from the society rang me the other night and asked for a bit of help and promotion. They got a 
probably last time it wasn't well promoted, so but uh, it's going to be well promoted this time. Uh, the um, by most towns in our area park, we've had the Shade Council, the Mary Gilmore Council, the BNS Hall Council, and it's really tough on our local businesses, whether it's a hotel, bond club, the supermarket, cafe, whatever. And uh, I think it's hopefully we can get back to having events like this bring bring people back to the town. And, uh, you know, I think it's really good news, and we're hoping to make the most of it. Thanks, Councillor Judd. You're spot on. It's uh, crucial. I think we're paying every single day and night that we can come back to um, uh, to the way that we used to be just together. I, I again reflect on uh, the function of Mr James, just being together uh, with that 51 guests I think that we had when we were together. I, I, it's amazing just how much um, uh, it moves you just to see every one of us together uh, and how much you miss it. I, it really hit me, I have to be quite frank with you. Uh, when I stood up and said my bit, just looking out at everybody, it's uh, um, and those times will come back. Those times will come back. I think it's probably pertinent too that um, you know this council's put a lot of time and effort and in the, in the volunteers into the tomorrow and every park railway stations now, and it's going to be good to have a you know shuttle service on that day, just making use of those facilities. Right. Thank you, Councillor Judd. Councillor Slade, I think. Thank you. Sorry, Councillor Winky. Yeah, I just want to go back to what Councillor Smith was saying in regard to the round about the edge and the height. And, and I have had quite a few comments on that, that people in, in, in normal sized cars aren't sitting up high like in a four wheel drive. So they look difficult in seeing the indicators coming towards them from the other side. They don't know whether they're turning, going straight through this type of thing. So they said, yeah, 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 would like to see that head just lowering. Okay, well, maybe, uh, and I take advice from the engineering managers, maybe because there has been something that has been raised consistently on and off over the years, and obviously it's still an issue. Uh, the engineers uh, think that perhaps that we should revisit this and refer it to the traffic committee to at least sit down, have a look at, and even on site. The manager? Um, yeah, more than happy to. Down that path. I agree with Bimmel though, like you had a roundabout, you give way to your right, um, so you, you, know, you don't really have a need to, to see what's in front, but um, sort of more than happy to take the traffic committee. Get, um, you know, I'm not sure whether anybody's actually looked right into the rules and what they are, but we can do Some that. Some years ago, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't recall doing it, but. So, uh, it's probably a, a, a driving practice fraught with danger to rely on indicators to decide whether you go ahead. I mean, it's like stepping out in front of a, um, at a pedestrian crossing. Yeah, you've still got to, to look at what happens. You're, you're relying, you know, blinkers don't work, they don't put them on right, they've gone off before they get there. If you're relying on that, um, there's a sure way to have an accident. I've seen actually, you know, the new rule where you've got to blink indicate when you're going out. I've seen where some people <coughs> do that too early and it looks as if they're turning. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So, <laughs> Councillor Winky and Councillor Smith, would you like to move a motion that I would be happy to receive that it be referred to the Traffic Committee for uh, consideration? So, so Councillor Smith, Councillor Winky, moved and seconded. Uh, all those of that opinion, please say aye. Okay. Contrary, no. Clear that carrot. It, it, look, it has been some years ago since we did look at it. Just be careful. Oh, man. sorry. What did I? Sorry, was that a discussion of the motion? Discussion. I discussion. beg your pardon. I, uh, just hang on, Councillor. I uh, apologise about that. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. A discussion on the motion, Councillor. I think part of this report should be um, statistics on the amount of accidents that are occurring on the roundabouts. Take that to the traffic committee as well. That should be. Use them. I don't recall too many accidents on roundabouts here in the court. So. The other, I'm not sure it's as big an issue as what they make it out to be. And that may well be the findings, um, uh, Council Oliver, but uh, the manager. Excuse me. The other thing I'd be very careful of is that if you go digging too far, you might find that they're got to be removed. <laughs> But I think it, it, it is obviously it's it, it's been an issue raised 
by um, community members to councillors. It's appropriate. We have a traffic committee to consider such things. It's been many years since that has been considered. Uh, and it may well be, Council Oliver, that um, what uh, he was saying uh, proves to be the case. However, it's probably timely that we at least get, you know, there's been change in, uh, as you acknowledge, the change in uh, deck chairs at RMS or whatever, Transport for New South Wales. Councillor Winky. Yeah, and look, it's not to remove the edge completely, it's to lower it. That's what the main concern is. So I think the manager, you're, you're right, I know what you mean, Councillor Winky, but I think what the manager is saying is Once you take the RMS time. might say, well, actually, now that we're looking at this, let's remove it all together. However, uh, we, it'll come back to us and we will determine what uh, we do it's their road. Uh, in that. Well, it is their road, but we'll get Miss Cook onto it. <laughs> <laughs> Council Winky. Just a question to, to the technical manager. Did, did the RMS dictate us to the height of the head? Uh, certainly, through you, Mr. Mayor, the roundabout, particularly at the intersection of the Burley Griffin Way and the Goldfields Way, actually all the roundabouts because they're on the Goldfields Way, uh, most certainly uh, are a major interest or are the responsibility of RMS. And, you know, hopefully it's a non issue, but just be careful. Yeah, but, uh, yeah part of the specifications, does it? Indicate to you how high the hedge has to be, or does it really? It's not going to be a nuisance if we knock a 300 mil off it. So the works manager, do you have yeah, a comment? Yeah. I, have, I haven't come across anything in relation to hedges, and uh, on major intersection, I think there is there are no hedges. Uh, if 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 we are a concern, probably. Uh, lowering the height a little bit, it should uh, not be a problem. But if you are talking about 300 mil, uh, and, and if you go to goes to the committee, we may be looking at another option of removing it completely. That's I'm, I'm just flagging up another issue scenario. Well, that, that's true, Mr. Manager. But I still believe, even if that does come back as a recommendation, uh, or a, maybe even at worst, a, a demand from uh, Transport for New South Wales, this council will consider uh, that position and will respond how we think. And if that means taking it as high as we can, uh, then that's what we'll do. But I still think it's appropriate that the Traffic Committee revisit that uh, issue because we have some residents that have obviously raised it as a genuine concern. We appreciate uh, you uh, as managers raising those uh, genuine possible scenarios, but I, I do think the committee needs to uh, consider it. Thank you. Councillor McLaren. Can we not um, request the garden staff just to trim it an inch or two lower um, before we go to the committee as a minor adjustment? I don't know how much would make a big difference, but it might only be an inch or two and it might just be that might do it. I don't know. Thank you. The, the manager. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Lowering the height is not an issue. Uh, inch or two or hundred mil, uh, like four inch, it should be fine. That that's how our, our staff does it, anyways. So, I think like when they prune it, it's, it's not uh, millimeter perfect. It's always yeah. like uh, inch here or there. It always looks good. It's always looks so good. I'd hate to have them removed under an order by an mm. RMS. Well, we're 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 assuming you think this is the thing. This is why I think if this motion gets passed, uh, the Councillor Smith and Councillor Winky have put, the traffic committee will consider it. And whatever is mentioned at that meeting will come back to this council to consider. So I, 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 I think, uh, you know, we're speculating. <laughs> so, Councillor McLaren. Could I move an amendment that um, the garden staff, um, when they prune the hedge, uh, prune it slightly lower, 100 mils lower than their maintenance routine? Uh, so you, you're moving a motion that the hedges on the roundabout be trimmed, uh, trimmed 100 mil lower as part 100 of general mil lower in terms of uh, yeah general maintenance. Okay, is there a second for that amendment, please, Councillor <laughs> Judd? Moved and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion on the amendment, Councillor Judd? Well, I think it's a better way to go rather than take take the risk of going to the traffic committee. I think we just do this first and see what. Yeah, okay. Um, the manager, discussion. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is that for both the round about? Or That's my understanding. About? Yes, the two roundabouts in Moscow. Yep. Okay, a discussion of the amendment, Councillor Oliver. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I endorse Councillor Judge Collins. I think this is the best way to go. If we go to the Traffic Committee, I fear that we'll lose those heaters entirely. So just do this thing first and see what happens. Right. <laughs> okay, uh, now I'm going to go to Councillor Smith and Councillor Winky. Do you still wish your motion to stand or would you like to withdraw it? Withdraw the motion. Oh, good. You're happy to withdraw it? Okay, thank you. So now we have uh, Councillor McLaren, Councillor Judd's motion in relation to the uh, the two roundabouts in Hoskins Street, the hedges being uh, trimmed to 100 mil. Uh, if there's no further discussion, I'll put that motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Sorry. Uh, yeah, 100 mil lower, yes, not 100 correct. Uh, You're not 100 yes. mil higher. Yes. I'm sure the words can see. Well, thank you, <laughs> Smith. Uh, I declare the motion carried. Thank you. Uh, where the heck were we? Uh, so we've finished the uh, council. Okay. Uh, I didn't have any matters of rising. Oh, other than I was just going to raise. Um, the issue about uh, the rates notices, and I, I commend the director for uh, putting out uh, a, a, uh, a statement to the, the community that they can understand why it was late. Because let's face it, there are some people that have to budget um, today more than ever in relation to the payment of their rates. So thank you for that. How are we going in relation to ensuring as best as we can that that sort of thing uh, won't, uh, won't be a regular occurrence? But it's rectified and for now. Uh, yeah, we're at their mercy, really. We rely so heavily on the software, and yeah, well, it doesn't work. Okay. So it's obviously not financially viable for us to uh, do all the right side, is it? That is in terms of, yeah. Impossible. No, no, that's, that's fine. It's just, again, uh, yes, it's just something that uh, I think uh, we did need to let our community know and we did a good job in that space. The Director? Just a further comment that this year should have been the worst because it was the first year that we were with the new version of the software. So, yeah. Okay. So that's their that chance. Yet. Okay. <laughs> no, thank you very much for that. Uh, councillors, no further business without notice. Let's uh, please receive, uh, have a motion receiving the information paper, please, on 245. The Deputy Mayor, Council Oliver, moved and seconded. Uh, all those of that opinion, please say aye. Country no. Clear the motion. Thank you. Any items, councillors, out of your information paper you wish to draw council's attention? Director, happy with the rates income? Oh well, considering. Considering they didn't have rates, yes. Yeah, pretty good, aren't they? Uh, nothing else, councillors? Councillor McLaren. Uh, just to note the improved performance of the Town Hall Theatre on July, August. Yes. Thank God. <laughs> Thank you. Anything further, councillors, in the information paper? I tell you what, I have to say this. The, um, <coughs> enjoyed the last year. I always enjoy basically reading the uh, regulatory a report from the ranger. Uh, I have to say, as the director responsible, uh, he really, really does earn his money. But it is amazing that the varying roles that a ranger has, and, uh, and really and truly, it just astounds me uh, what he does. That's true. He has a wide uh, range of activities, and uh, I've often told him it's, it's uh, probably a job on council, to be honest. But well, he, he does it in a, in a uh, pragmatic and helpful way. Yes, that's. I think all the council agree with that.
thank you very much for that. There's no further items in relation to Councillor McLaren. Sorry, just the promotion of the uh, uh, um, 18.15, Michael McCormack's uh, online mental health support for small business. Is Council doing any um, advertising or promotion of that program to promote it? Or is it just on the website? Uh, page 277, uh, the Mr McCormack's online mental health support for small business. You know, the farm is a small business, there's a lot of businesses in the community and this might be a good resource. So, uh, thank you. The gentleman, did we refer this to TV or not? We, um, sure. So is it Facebook or Narrabarra News or? Yeah, thank you. I'm going to ask our environment, our economic development manager, Mr. Sinclair, do you have any comment in relation to that? My name is Laura Brackney from Agriculture and Sorry. The McCormack's, uh, Mr. McCormack's announcement on online mental health to support small business. Is that uh, the um, Royal Financial Council Service? No, it's uh, uh, every mind. Uh, every mind at all. So perhaps, perhaps uh, Councillor McLaren, the, the general manager, will uh, forward that on to the let the know. And, um, uh, and the wider community. Thank you very much. Yeah, look, honestly, I, I can, you know, our staff can be forgiven. I think on this occasion there are that many mental health uh, support programs out there as, well, frankly, there should be. Um, you know, from a state perspective and a federal perspective, so uh, sometimes it can get a little confusing. But uh, the general manager, you'll uh, you'll handle that. Thank you. Uh, nothing further from the information paper. If not, in accordance with section 10A of the Local Government Act 1993, advise that there are several matters that are deemed confidential. And accordingly, I require motion to have those matters considered. Thank you. The Deputy Mayor, Council Oliver, move and second that all those of that opinion, please say aye. No. Have the motion carried. Thank you.